everybody, I'm Stacey J. And I'm Chuck Duran. Welcome to VO Buzz Weekly, the first ever web entertainment show dedicated to the voiceover industry. Every week we're here to bring you the latest 411 on everything voiceover. That's right, we'll bring you news, trivia, technology, as well as celebrity interviews with superstars in the voiceover world. Like today's guests, who you've heard on countless TV promos and movie trailers all over the world. We're so excited to have him here. And he is such an awesome guy, too. Yes, he is. Okay, but before we get to that, let's do a little news and trivia. Okay, so I'm on the internet, on Google, as I quite often am. A lot. Right. So, and I find uh, that, I find out that TomTom, Tom, the famous car navigation system, now lets you go to their website and download celebrity voices to navigate you around town. Really? Like who? Like uh, Clint Eastwood. Nice. Or um, Homer Simpson. <laughs> or, get this, Ozzy Osbourne. Oh, my God. Could you God. imagine? Having Ozzy navigating you around. First of all, you can't even understand what the hell he's saying. Oh, right? yeah. Exactly. Anyways, I thought that was really cool. What do you got for us? I have a little trivia about E.T., who Ooh, did the voice. Love you know? E.T. Ouch. Oh, idiot. idiot. Do you know who did the voice? I have no idea. Okay, she was an American-born actress named Pat Welsh. She's since passed away in 95. But she was discovered while talking in a camera store by the sound effects creator, Ben Burt, who said, I love the sound of your voice. Come audition. So she does. Is she, like, ordering film or something? I don't know. Please give me some film. <laughs> I don't know. Okay. But anyway, she gets the part. They simultaneously use her voice for the majority of the film with Deborah Winger, who did the temp voice for the movie. She spent about nine hours recording her parts, and guess how much she got paid? Nine hours. Oh, wait, say. before I tell you that, she was a two-pack-a-day chain smoker. So that gives you a little insight Does into she, the sound of the voice. Do you get paid voice. more when you smoke, or you get paid no, less? No, I don't know. I don't know. know what the union rules are with no, that. No, no, but, but just to, that's the sound <laughs> of the voice that obviously Okay. Is. But so how much did she get paid? A couple grand? No, $380. Holy Toledo. Hey, you know what? That's more than I make. It's more than I make. You've heard him on trailers for X-Men and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. You've heard him on promos for ABC, Fox, CNN, the CW, Showtime. And basically, let me put it this way. There's about 15 trailer guys out there that do the lion's share of all these trailers that you hear. Scott is one of them. Welcome, Scott Rommel. Thank you. You're welcome, brother Great man. Great to be with you Thank guys. Thank you for being Great to be here. Glad to have you here. Give us an idea how you got started. Did you always know you wanted to be a voice actor? Yeah. yeah. I, well, you know, when I was a little kid, and I've heard other people talk about this, but I would be the kid that goes to Disneyland, and I want to stay uh, in the first room of the Haunted Mansion to hear Paul Frees' narration over and over again. Or I'd stop to listen to every announcement, not because I was interested in what was coming up, but just, you know, uh, how Jack Wagner had that beautiful uh, announcer's voice. And my grandfather had a, an old reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. Whenever I went over to his house, I would grab it and run in the closet and pretend that was the studio and I'd make some funny skit and then bring it out and everybody would laugh and and so then later on my dad was a Los Angeles City firefighter but he had the position for a while where he was actually the spokesman so he was the guy on TV that was lighting the Christmas trees on fire and talking about oh, the yeah, safety yeah. and talking about brush fires and so it wasn't uncommon for me to hear my dad on the radio. My dad had a beautiful voice and uh, still does have a beautiful voice and uh, I thought wow that could be a real profession and so I just really really started gravitating toward that and then I got a job in radio pretty much right after high school but I wasn't a disc jockey I was an account executive that's the only way I could get in but every day after work, I would go into the production room and I would put on the headphones and I would just start to read copy. Interesting story. Uh, I, I was in there one day reading this copy and the program director, who had a beautiful voice, saw me in there and he was actually on the air and there was the glass between the two rooms and um, on a commercial break he walked into the room and he said, hey, I want to tell you something. He said, I see you come in here day after day. And he said, I just think I can take, save you a lot of time and heartache. He said, you just don't have the pipes to be on this side of the business. And so I think you should just cut your losses. And, wow. And, uh, and you know what? If you, heard, if you guys heard me back then, you <laughs> might on, have thought. Laugh for a second. You might have thought. Yeah. He, that guy was right, you know. Right. But the the truth is, it was this interesting fork in the road because I knew that I had this passion to do it, and 
and maybe I didn't sound that great, but um, he didn't know that I was willing to go that distance and keep working. And, and so um, uh, he called me a few years ago, and oh, he said, yeah. hey, can I take you out for a cup of coffee? And I said, sure. He goes, I'm haunted by your voice, and every time I hear your voice, I tell whoever is standing next to me, how stupid I was. Oh. <laughs> and I told him that I really actually appreciated what he told me because it gave me that, I'll show you, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. It gave me that right, kind right. of fork in the road. Right. And, and so, you know, I, I just used it as motivation. But um, anyway, I left radio in 1986. That's when I um, signed with ICM. That was my first agent. How and did you get to them? Did you okay, this is, a, this, yeah. is, this is another crazy story because I made this tape Back then, we were putting our voiceover demos on reel-to-reel -reel mm -hmm. tapes, oh, and I'm dating myself, but do you do this is true. Well, you, you know what? At least one. Okay. <laughs> at least one. At least one, right? <laughs> so I remember um, at that time there was 15 uh, agencies in Los Angeles that you could sign with, mm -hmm. and I uh, made this tape, which I thought was really great. Uh, well, I thought it was great enough to send out, and right. so I started calling one by one these agents, and some of them were nice, and some of them weren't nice, and some of them, but this one, uh, Jeff at ICM said, look, I'm not even going to listen to your tape, so I'm going to either throw it in the trash, or if you want to come by and pick it up, and, and uh, I said, okay, uh, I'll come by and pick it up, because back then, yeah, you know, could so use your tape, Sure, right? man, these things were hard <laughs> to make. Cheap. So I had one more to call. And it was uh, Abrams, Rubeloff, and Lawrence. And I called them, and the agent said, Scott, yes, we all listened to your tape, and we loved it. You sound great. I'm thinking, oh, man, this is going to be it, right? She goes, but uh. we just signed somebody that's in your same voice category. And I said, well, what was his name? And she told me the person's name. And I said, well, was he a... Did he work a lot? Oh, yeah, he's on this commercial and that commercial. I said, well, where did she, he uh, come from? And she said he came from ICM. Oh. So I said, thank you very much. And I <laughs> took a deep breath, and I called Jeff back, and I said, look, I know what you said to me yesterday, but here's what Abram said to me, that I have some potential, I'm going to make money, and I sound like this guy who you just lost. And he said, I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, I signed with them the next day. Wow. But it was just taking that extra step, you know, it was like out of your comfort zone, you know, and just trying to jam your baby toe in the door, you know. And well, what I keep hearing is you obviously, you get knocked down, and so many people don't get up, but obviously that's in your nature to just keep going, and you have that confidence, so where do you get that confidence from, do you think? You know, I just think it's because I love this art form so much, and this is what I knew I wanted to do. So it's a little bit easier if, it, if you're if you're confident about what it is you want to do. Yeah. There's just no going backwards for me. Somebody was going to sign me. I was going to do commercials. There I was going to do that. It's and the so, attitude, man. And so, um, yeah. So, Tell us a little bit about the, some of the projects that we hear your voice on. Uh, well, every day I work. Maybe you should take a sip of water. Uh, yeah, maybe yeah. you should take a sip of water <laughs> before you, you, you <laughs> go, go on with I'm gonna this. I'm going to get stuff. comfortable. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> get your popcorn out. I'm blessed right. to work with some awesome, awesome people, and I have some uh, great clients. On CBS, I do a show called The Mentalist. Oh, nice. Uh, great show. Simon Baker. Yeah. And I do uh, a new show called Person of Interest, and then various specials throughout the years. And then for ABC, I'm the voice of. Uh, a brand new show called Suburgatory. I do Castle. Oh, very funny show. I do uh, Extreme Makeover Home Edition. I do a lot of their branding scripts and America's Funniest Videos, AFV. AFV. So there I got to know oh, nice. today. Nice. And um, yeah, and then uh, CNN. I get to do a lot of the political stuff on CNN tonight on CNN. I hear you there all the time, by the way. So that's fun. Yeah. Um, I have a new uh, show on Showtime called Homeland, which is one of my favorite TV shows. I'm hooked. I just uh, did something for Steven Spielberg's new movie called War Horse, which is going to be a really cool one. I had a really great summer. I was on a lot of the, the fun movies. I started with Super 8, which yep. turned out to be one of my favorite movies yeah. ever. And uh, then I did uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, X-Men, Horrible Bosses, 
uh, Captain America. Nice. Uh, and you did the Oprah show for a long yes. time, right? Yes, I was the voice of the Oprah show for six mm -hmm. years. Mm -hmm. That was an awesome experience. Do you feel more oh, feminine man. connected now that you... <laughs> I think I've always felt connected. I've always loved Oprah, you know? I Good. really, I, I have, and so, and she's a wonderful lady, and, yeah. and so we had a great six years together and then I just started doing the Rosie show for Harpo oh, okay. Rosie moved into On the Oprah's own network right yes yeah and Rosie moved right into the Harpo stage in Chicago there and so I started doing the promos for her new show so that's very cool yeah so Scott do you like the sound of your own voice you know it, it's interesting I will listen to my voice and my family, you know, if we're, we're, uh, we're watching TV and a commercial comes on, I'll tend to listen to it, but not because I want to hear the sound of my own voice. I just wanted to hear, wow, I, first of all, I probably haven't seen the picture because I'm working in a booth. So how do they finish the commercial? And then what could I have done different? Do I like the way it sounded? Um, there are certain times where uh, a piece of music uh, matches to my voice and I, I really like that sound you know maybe a certain movie trailer with a, you know maybe a beautiful orchestral piece or something where I go um, but generally um, I think as voice people we have to like something about our voices we have to and we have to understand that they're instruments yeah. and um, you know my mentor was Dawes Butler and he said look you know God gave you a Stradivarius but somebody needs to teach you how to play it Mm -hmm. And uh, what he meant was sometimes you're going to play a piece of jazz, sometimes you're going to play a classical piece, sometimes it's going to be rock. But you need to know what your voice is in all those different areas. And, and I don't really think of them as voices. I think of them more as characters and attitudes. Right. Because if I came in here and talked like this to you... You would think that I was weird, you know. <laughs> you know in the trailers, we always stretch out the end of the words, right? right. But nobody right. talks like that, no, right? No, no. And I but think it sounds good. sometimes yeah. people are um, are surprised when they find out I'm a voice actor. They go, "Well, do you use that voice?" <laughs> and I, rarely, you know. Yeah. It's like you know, because if I, you know, do the dram dramatic thing, or if I was like. This week at Ralph's Red Delicious Apples. Hi, Chuck. How are you? It's great to see you today. You know, it's like, uh, and there are some yeah, voice people, people that I've met that you, do yeah. always talk They're in a voice yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah, so it's a little yeah like, and you're kind of waiting yeah. for the punch. But, how yeah. do you keep your voice healthy? Because you obviously work every day yeah. a lot. So how do you keep how do you keep yourself going? You know, I do uh, vocal exercises every day. Wow, you um, do? Yeah. You know, get a 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 good blood, bad blood, good blood, bad blood, red leather, yellow leather, red leather, yellow leather, to get the mouth working. Yeah. And then I also do some vocal warm ups. And there's some great ones to get resonance, just um, buzzing your lips together. Open, opens up the resonating chambers oh, cool, and stuff. Man. But anyway, I do some of that stuff and then I don't scream. I just can't scream. Not I'd even, love to scream. Not even at your wife or the kids. No, I'm like I'm uh, I, I'm a big sports fan, and mm -hmm. I'd be at the Laker game, and I can I don't yell. Yay! <laughs> that, you know, and I used to play. Uh, I played uh, Aquaman on the Justice League show, mm. and um, I, on Friday nights, I would go in and I would do my ADR stuff and do my screams and my hits and all that stuff. You know the oh ah, you know all that stuff. Right. Because. I need a couple of days to yeah. uh, rest after that so that my voice is in great shape. Because you, you can really tear it up. What does Aquaman sound like? Real quick. I am the born ruler of Atlantis. I am Aquaman. Nice. I love it. That's cool. Right? Sounds a lot like my trailer stuff, kind of, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah kind of. It's like a trailer, Aqua yeah. Trailer Man. Aqua yeah. Trailer Man. Your so, problem. So, obviously, besides your talents, what do you attribute to where you are in your career? I mean, what. I think it's just a lot of hard work. Yeah. Um, I just work, 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 work. You know, I drove from Orange County to, uh, to Hollywood every day for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And one of my things I used to do in the morning with my warm-ups was I would read every billboard out loud on the way into town. Uh, and I would love it when they would change the billboards because <laughs> it was like, <laughs> oh, good, a new out. line, you know? And, <laughs> right. And, uh, but I just was constantly um, learning, listening. I was in a lot of workshops. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, um, my mentor, Dawes Butler, I heard, heard him interviewed on the radio, and he said briefly that he worked with new young talent. I said, that's me. I'm new young talent. <laughs> so I called Hanna-Barbera, and I said, I, I need Dawes Butler's phone number. I'm new and I young said, talent. wait, don't get, give it out. And I said, I heard him say that he works with new young talent. Aw, that's kind of sweet. And so I called him up. 
and I was in my early 20s, and uh, he answered the phone, and, and I said, Mr. Butler, I said, my name's Scott Rummel, I'm a new young voice talent, and I said, I heard you say that you liked, it. he said, send me a tape, I said, I don't have a tape, and he said, well, why don't you make a tape, and then send it to me, I said, I was hoping you'd help me make a tape, <laughs> and he, there was this long pause, and then he said, okay, here's my address, and um, so I spent the last three years that he was on the planet, every Thursday I'd drive up and study with him, and uh, the person usually before me was Nancy Cartwright, who studied with Dawes, and then the person after me was Bill Farmer, who became Goofy, and, mm -hmm. and so forth. So cool. it, uh, having a great mentor is a big key to yeah. success, too. But I studied. I was always in workshops. And I took all kinds of improv workshops and, and uh, voiceover workshops. And I, I studied with casting directors and producers and other voice talents. And, you know, I just was committed to being a lifetime learner. I still am. I was at a voiceover workout group last night, and I learned a ton uh, from uh, the other students that were there. Yeah. What words of wisdom would you give somebody starting out in the business today? Well, for the... For somebody that's young that really has a passion for this, um, I say, man, just keep going, keep learning. If you think it's a quick way to make a buck, it's probably not the right business for you. Uh, it'll get old really fast. There's a lot of rejection. There's a lot of hard work. Um, and it takes a lot of years. You know, I have a lot of people come up to me and say, I'd like to do that movie trailer kind of work. And um, I refer them to a book by Malcolm Gladwell called... Uh, outliers where he studies people that have had success in many different arenas and he says the average person has spent 10,000 hours of focused energy toward their craft and if you look at my career I started in 1986 and 1996 was when I got my first trailer it was 10 years of work and if you listen to my very first demo tape you'll hear there was a trailer on there because that was something that I aspired to. But it takes a lot of time and energy. And you don't just start there. You have to be willing to keep going. And you have to have a thick hide. You know, I tell young voiceover people, every agent in town told me no, except for one. Right. And, uh, you know, I think a lot of those other agents probably wish maybe now that they had said yes, you know, right. who knows. Yeah. But, um, but the idea is that you can have people tell you that you didn't do a good job or you're not good enough or this or whatever, but you just have to believe in yourself and be willing to put in the work. Exactly. So, here you go. Okay, everybody, that's all the time we have this week, but be sure and join us next week when we're taking you on part two of the Scott Rummel interview, Home Studio Invasion. You're going to learn all the tricks of what he does to make this thing happen. And make sure to go to VOBuzzWeekly.com and subscribe so you don't miss one single episode. Also, join us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter at VOBuzzWeekly. Thanks, everybody. And remember, you, you always, always have time, time for a little buzz. buzz.